Hello everyone. My name is Sogulli from Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. First of all, I would like to appreciate the conference organizing committee for having me here. It's such an honor to give you an invited talk. So today I would like to talk about uh, a tier-based battery for smart contact lens. And before I move on to the main contents, I would like to briefly introduce my research group, what my research group are doing. Um, so basically, we are using the nanomaterial synthesis, electrochemistry, and the microfabrication. And we are working on the materials and systems for energy applications. So basically, we have a four large research topic. The one is the mechanical behavior of the battery electrode module when they have large volume change. Actually, they have uh, a lot of the mechanical issues. So we are studying on it. And uh, we, used, uh, we are developing the electrochemical systems for thermal energy harvesting and kinetic energy harvesting. In particular, today, I would like to talk about uh, the power supply uh, for the wearable devices, especially um, the battery, safe battery for the smart contact lens applications. A smart contact lens is considered as very promising, one of promising wearable electronic devices. Uh, if some of you uh, watch it, um, the movie Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation, uh, you may remember um, the one of colleague of Tom Cruise where um, this contact lens, uh, and this contact lens um, uh, has the spy cam, as you can see here. So yes, like this movie, actually a lot of movies and um, the conceptual uh, drawings suggest the many kind of applications of the smart contact lens in the near future. So uh, there are, yes, many possible applications. First, health monitoring. Yes, we can detect a lot of biochemicals contained in tears using smart contact lens, including glucose and other biomolecules. Visualization. Yes, uh, we can, yeah, hopefully uh, it hasn't been um, demonstrated yet completely, but as you can see in this figure, we can put some camera or display uh, to uh, present the information to the user in real time. And also we can think about various therapy, therapy like a drug delivery and heating and so on. So um, recently there are many uh, kind of uh, demonstration of smart contact lens for these various applications. First, this is one of most famous uh, photo uh, image uh, when we talk about uh, smart contact lens, yes, uh, the Google has ever suggested uh, some conceptual uh, design of the smart contact lens. And some people, researchers are working on glucose sensors. And uh, recently, um, the, the research group in post in Korea um, uh, presented, uh, reported uh, the glucose sensor integrated with the drug delivery systems. Okay, there are many uh, demonstrations of the smart contact lens. Then, uh, my question is, uh, no matter what application you have, how can you supply the power this smart contact lens? If your smart contact lens contains any electronic device, then we need to supply power to operate them. First, we can consider wireless transmission. Uh, so, so far, the, there has been many demonstration of the operation of smart contact lens. Then the, a lot of research, research groups has been used this wireless transmission. So as you can see here, this, uh, this is the Labit, and uh, this Labit is wearing one of smart contact lens. And this PCB board contains the wireless the coil to transmit the power. Uh, this is already commercialized one of, of smart contact lens to detect the eye pressure. 
So this patient is wearing smart contact lens to measure the eye pressure, and this lens requires power. And then uh, the medical staff um, attaches the, the coils, as you can see here, to transmit the power. Yes, this is how we can use wireless transmission to supply power to the smart contact lenses. Okay, for, in my opinion, it is good enough for the medical application for the special you know, treatment. But how about daily or entertaining applications? For example, you have the glucose sense sensing smart contact lens can be used every day, every hour, and you, you want to use that device at home. Then it is very hard to attach this wireless uh, power transmission coil by yourself. What about entertaining application or military applications? Um, yes, it's hard to imagine to uh, adding this uh, coil on your face. The, the next uh, device, the option you can think about is, of course, battery. Yes, uh, when we use any wearable devices, any portable electronic devices, yeah, always battery has been the first choice to supply power, especially for smart smartphone and uh, the smart watch. So uh, there has been many researches of the battery to be implanted in smart contacts, the contact lens platform. So this is one of recent research, uh, the KIST in Korea uh, demonstrated um, that they fabricated solid state battery by depositing lithium ion battery electrode material and solid electrolyte. And they implanted this thin film battery in the smart con the contact lens platform. And they successfully demonstrated power supply. And sometimes we can also consider the super capacitor. Yes, uh, I believe the battery is the one of um, yes promising um, yeah option to supply power to smart contact lens. Okay, then let's think about uh, the batteries, especially safety. Uh, recently, we had uh, many um, the reports about the explosion of the lithium-ion battery. Uh, yeah, if once you have explosion of the lithium ion battery, uh, then it's going to be disaster. Especially, let's imagine you have the lithium ion battery in the contact lens, and this battery has explosion while you are wearing this uh, smart contact lens. So, yes, especially the ocular system is very delicate and very critical, so it's going to be huge disaster. And also, uh, if the battery has a leakage, although you use a non-flammable aqueous battery, and they mostly use a toxic electrolyte. So if there is a leakage, it will damage um, the, your eye system seriously. So uh, this contact lens requires the highest safety level of the battery. So, in fact, um, there are lithium-ion battery used in inside of your body. So this is a lithium iodine cell, and as you can see here, it has a very thick package to ensure the safety of this lithium battery inside of your body. But let's think about the form factor of the contact lens. So in the contact lens, this kind of thick package is not available. So, in this presentation, I would like to suggest um, the sodium potassium ion aqueous battery working in tear. Let's think about our tear fluid. Our tear fluid is almost similar with this saline water. Saline water contains sodium chloride, about 0.9% of sodium chloride, as you can see here. 
So our idea is uh, we use this tier solution, which is a solution containing sodium and potassium ion. Of course, it is based on water. Uh, so we want to make this battery and we want to implant this battery into the uh, contact lens platform. Since we use tier solution as electrolyte, there's no list called electrolyte. And we don't need a package, so we can increase um, the the portion of the battery inside of the contact lens, or we can utilize um, the remained volume for the other component more efficiently. So, um, consequently, uh, so we believe this um, sodium potassium ion aqueous battery can guarantee the ultimate safety of the battery of the smart contact lens. So to realize that idea, at first, we carefully selected the possible electrode for the tear-based battery. So yes, we selected a uh, Prussian blue analog. Um, so it is very well known um, the electrode material um, can contain sodium or potassium ions. So for the anode, we selected the prussian blue, and for the cathode, we selected copper hexacyanophthalate, in short, copper HCFFE. So um, these materials, this prussian blue has um, the cubic crystalline structure, and um, the sodium or potassium ion can have intercalation or deintercalation upon um, the reduction and oxidation. And if you take a look the the right hand side, right side. So at first we tested the CV uh, of these two electrode material, PB and copper HF. The main question in this study is uh, okay, actually this PB and copper HF, the Prussian blue analogs, has been studied uh, a lot in the well-controlled electrolyte, the, elect uh, the aqueous electrolyte containing the sodium or potassium ion with a uh, well, uh, the desired concentration and desired pH. But um, since we want to use tear as an electrolyte, actually we cannot control the condition of the electrolyte. So uh, we made the artificial tear solution um, so the sodium concentration is 0.15 mole and potassium concentration is 0.02 mole. So if we, this is the average concentration of the sodium and potassium ion in tear. Then we, con uh, we adjusted pH to 7. And then we compare this electrochemical performance of these two electro material, electrode material in artificial tears and one more NaCl and KCl solutions, as you can see here. So this part is for PB and this part is for copper HCF. So if you notice the black curves for the artificial tears, yes, uh, we can say this electrode is working well uh, in this artificial tear solution, especially uh, um, this CB tell you that um, these two PBA material has the potassium ion intercalation instead of the sodium, although the concentration of potassium is less than sodium. And then um, we also tested GCPL uh, of each electrode. This is for the copper HCF, and this is the prussian blue, and we got the desired GCPL curves. So um, the average voltage, the potential, of the copper HF is around 0 0.6 to 0.7, and the potential of the PB is around um, 
0.15 versus AJGCL electrode. Okay, after the confirmation of the electrochemical performance of these two electrode material, so we implanted these two electrodes in the platform of the contact lens made of hydrogel. So this figure show you the configuration of this contact lens battery. So basically we have uh, the sandwich structure of the PB anode and the copper shaft cathode as you can see here and it is sealed with hydrogel. The uh, hydrogel is um, the material of the contact lens and this electrode has a whole shoe shape to ensure the it doesn't block the vision of the contact lens which is the main uh, the function of the contact lens since we used uh, the hydrogel uh, as a sub substrate of the contact lens it is flexible so called as soft contact lens so this battery electrode also has to be uh, flexible so we made uh, the CNT and PBA composite with the polymer binders and this is the cross-sectional SEM image of the fabricated the, uh, the electrode the, which is the uh, PBA CNT composite and um, this is the bladed electrode the photo of the bladed electrode after we make um, this electrode of the cathode and anode, as you can see here, so and we use the, the, the cutting plotter uh, to make this whole shoe-shaped electrode. And these two electrodes are placed in the mold of the contact lens, and we pour the UV curable hydrogel. And finally, we cure the hydrogel and we could make the contact lens battery containing the whole shoe shape, the electrode. Uh, this photo is the uh, fabricated uh, contact lens battery uh, placed on the artificial eye. So you can see that the whole shoe shaped electrode is successfully embedded. Uh, especially if you take a look at this cross-sectional view of the lens. So it has a sandwich structure of the cathode and anode nicely and it is separated by hydrogel, which is the material of the contact lens. So to test the performance of the battery, we connected the carbon wire to each anode and cathode and we tested GCPL first. first. So from this data, um, so uh, we got uh, operation voltage of output voltage of the battery is from 0.3 volt to 0.7 volt and its capacity is around 160 microampere hours. We also uh, tested various current uh, of the batteries from the 100 microamp to the 600 microamp successfully. So uh, I believe if we increase the current more, probably this battery can supply that probably up to one uh, milliampere. And we also uh, tested the long term cycle, uh, more than 200. So it maintained uh, current efficiency nicely. Uh, so in the beginning of the uh, cycle, it has a little bit um, the rapid drop of the capacity and eventually this uh, well maintained. So considering the practical usage of the contact lens, um, so this battery uh, has to guarantee uh, the stable operation in the various uh, situations. So at first, uh, we demonstrated uh, the battery cycle in the lens cleaning solution, as you can see here. So even in this solution, um, so it has very good uh, shape of the GCPL curve, which is equivalent to uh, the previous test in the well-controlled artificial uh, tier, and it has a good cyclability. We also tested the lipid bending, as you can see here. We put uh, this 
contact lens battery in the artificial tear solution. And then we apply the repeated bending up to about 50%. And we run a long term cycle and it maintains the capacity and coolant efficiency very well. We also tested the biocompatibility. Um, so we tested, uh, we did a cytotoxicity test, test of the mammalian cells. So we put the lens uh, in the incubating solution, PBS solution. And then, um, so we uh, put the, uh, we had the three conditions, uh, the, the charging of the battery uh, and hydrogel only without the battery electrode material. Uh, then this is the control sample. Then we check the sub um, the number of cells are uh, still alive and dead. Then yeah, we can see there's no much difference between these three cases. Okay, so um, you may ask about the voltage of this contact lens battery. Yes, the output voltage is of this battery is from 0.3 to 0.7 volt, then you may ask, is this voltage uh, battery useful? Uh, actually, yes. So uh, we brought uh, the SLAM component and connected this device to our contact lens battery and uh, check the operation of this SLAM. And in, in this output signal, uh, you can see uh, this SLAM gives a nice um, the information. Uh, for the zero and one uh, powered by this contact lens battery. So yes, I can say that uh, this battery and output voltage is good enough to operate the low power IC components. Okay, uh, let me give a summary of this talk. So we developed the battery working in tier, so it can provide ultimate safety and it doesn't have package, so it can save a lot of volume. So uh, we tested the bending uh, during charging, and so uh, it guarantees the flexibility, and also it guarantees uh, biocompatibility. So its output voltage is from 0.3 to 0.7 volt, and it is good enough to operate IC uh, devices. Okay, uh, I would like to appreciate these three professors, Taeyeon uh, Bae uh, from KAIST, Wen Ting Zhao in NTU, Tony Kim in NTU. Um, so they helped the biocompatibility test and the demonstration of the low power IC devices. And Dr. Jung Eun Yoon is the, uh, the uh, many, uh, the top on the, the test. Uh, of this project, and he is the first author of this paper. Yes, uh, the contents of this presentation is mostly contains in these publications. And at last, I'd like to appreciate the funding support from Ministry of Education in Singapore. Okay, this is all for my presentation. Thank you so much. <laughs>